what's going on youtube it's your boy mile high pyro here with a little bit of a different video for you guys um i've been focusing on the firework aspect of it you know stash videos demos and the sorts um wanted to kind of walk you guys through the process that i go through to build my racks i've done a lot of research online um, i've got some 10 shot racks here that i've got built i've got a 30 shot rack i built last year and just recently i built a 24 shot fan rack um which worked really well if i would have been able to record for you guys it would have been great my fusing sucked on it so kind of a good thing i didn't upload that video for you guys uh, had a pause in between for memorial day but anyways um i'm going to be building a 12 shot rack for the first time and instead of kind of doing just straight across like i did on my 10 shot um you know one single row i'm going to try doubling it up this time um it's a new method for me. I'm trying it for the first time, so let's see how it goes. I've kind of done some rough calculations on what I'll need. Um, but first, I want to show you guys how I kind of figure out the initial length I need for that first for that first row. And I always like to, while you can take a rough number online and people will tell you, hey, you know, cut it to this length or that length, I always like to just physically throw my tubes on a one by on a two by three, which is what I use. Butt them all the way up to one end, and you'll see I have a little bit of a gap here. Just leave some wiggle room for you. Let's these tubes kind of move freely. Um, when you have that canister cell take off, this tube will kind of bounce a little bit in here, kind of rattle around, and you don't want it to be too tight. Um, you just increase your risk of a of a blowout. You know, something coming undone, and you know, using fireworks, especially in Colorado, where it's all kind of well, not kind of. You know, it is all illegal. Um, you want to mitigate risk as much as possible, and that goes for any region, not just here. So, don't build your racks too tight. Don't make it so your tubes are all snug in there. You want some wiggle room. You want some breathing room um, just in case of a, of a potential fail. So, that's how I come up with it. I butted all these up, cut these to size. As you can see, I got a little bit of a wiggle room there. Um, and I'll get a measurement for you guys for those that want it. These pieces are at 14 and 7 eighths. That is my two base pieces, and I've got four. And again, this is all two by three. These are going to be your, your end pieces here. These I cut at exactly 12. That's just a perfect height. Once you get the tube in there, you see you'll have a little bit of space up top. Now, this is our preference. There's some people who like to cut that all the way up to the top and have a nice, perfect, even um, rack built. I like this wiggle room. When it's time to go through and grab them, I can just grab it from the top. And have no issues um it's a preference that is completely up to you guys on what you guys like i like that space up top it's how i built all my racks and i'll continue to do so um on the side support i'm lucky enough to work at a place where i can get this one by four poplar um at no cost and this works perfect for me um I got some one by four furring strip. It seems to be a little bit cheaper, a little flimsier. So I always grab some of this either one by four or I've used some one by six on these one by ten racks. And uh, it's great. It's lightweight. It's strong. It is considered a hardwood. Um, and yeah, so that's that's the way I go about it. Uh, I'm going to be, I'll kind of show you guys how I plan to build this one. So I'm not going to record the entire thing and bore you guys to death. But in essence, I'm going to, let's see if I scoop back here. There we go. That's a better view. So I'm going to build one in essence by itself and each one of these will take the one base piece, the two outside legs, and then it'll take four of these one by four slats, one on the bottom for support, and then one will go right here on each side. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'll assemble this one. I'll put the two boards. Yeah, of course I'm playing Tetris over here now, right? Yeah, so a little rough mock-up for you guys. Then this will go like that, have that support out here, this support up here, obviously we'll have the one up here in the middle so this will be all nice and tight. And I'm going to take another piece of either 2x4 or 2x3 and put it right up against this bottom section here to stabilize the entire thing together. And that will also kind of serve as, I'll probably extend it out about 2 inches on either end and that will be a good, uh, some good legs for it to stand on just to avoid any any risk of it tipping over so um yeah that's kind of the design i have in mind we'll see if it works out screws wise i always use these spax 
construction screws. I don't use anything else. I know they're pricey, but you have the little star bit in there. Uh, makes it so it's very hard to strip out. And they come with this tip that'll eliminate, yeah, if it'll focus there. This eliminates splitting. Um, I never, I used to pre-drill when I used to use cheaper screws. I used to pre-drill everything. Uh, I realized going to these, I don't have to pre-drill anything and I never have any splits. Again, it's a more of an investment up front, but um, it's what works for me. It's worth it for me. I don't mind spending the extra couple bucks on a box of these um, just for the peace of mind and eliminate a step in the actual uh, construction process. So um, I'll go ahead and record all this and then I'll just kind of fast forward through it and show you guys the end product. All right, YouTube, here's the finished product. Um, I skipped a little bit as I was trying to figure out what to use on the legs and getting the tubes in here. Obviously, you guys saw me fast forward through most of the building process. Um, like I mentioned, I make use of what I've got. I have some pressure treated 2x4 uh, material from an old shelf I tore down. Uh, use that for the legs. Um, makes it very, very sturdy. Zero chance of this thing tipping over. Um, I will always admit my flaws and look to improve, so I appreciate any comments, any tips, recommendations, uh, anything you guys think I could could have done differently. I will say I may have to take some of these screws out and kind of realign some of this. I don't know if it's easy to see, but these aren't completely flush, and these aren't completely flush. I was going to put another piece of 1x4 right here to stabilize the top. Um, just not sitting flush how I like. Makes it look a little, little off. Um, it's fine as it is. I mean, the fact that these are two by threes, they're all anchored at the bottom. I use big two and a half inch construction screws. I mean, this thing is not moving. It's not, it's not going to split. It's not going to break. It's, it's as sturdy as can be. I inspect my shelves or my racks after every use. So I'm not worried about it, but, um, my OCD is kind of getting the better. I mean, I might have, have to redo that a little bit. Um, two things real quick. One shout out to everyone who's used the, um, 
promo code at backyard-pyro.com. Jason over there is awesome to deal with. I keep stressing that just because I've had a great partnership with him. Um, I've seen some of you guys use that code already. I get alerted, and man, I, I can't stress enough how much I appreciate it. Um, not because of what the channel benefits from it, but because it shows you guys care enough to, to use the code I provided. And uh, that pushes me to keep going, pushes me to make more content. Um, honestly, man, I'm getting close to 500 subscribers. It is blowing my mind. I never thought I'd get there. And uh, I'm planning something pretty cool for that. I had some requests to do a comparison video between some 6-inch Panda Shells and 6-inch Masters. Um, for those of you who know, that is an unfair comparison. So what I'm going to do for 500, I'm going to take two or three of every single shell kit that I own. So you guys will see Anarchy Black, Anarchy White, Red, Master 7, Master 6s. I've got, uh, I don't know if you guys can see them up there. I've got Geishas, I've got Bombas, I've got Chromas, Ghostacular, Manhattan. And I've got the SFX Power Pack that has another four different shell types from Superior. Uh, so I'm going to be throwing all of those in my 30-shot rack, fusing them all together, or fusing them individually with the um, with some MJG igniters. I want to make sure I fire those off one at a time and do a solid comparison between consumer and not-so-consumer shells. So again, appreciate you guys. 500 subscribers is, you know, creeping up fast on me. And I'm, I'll put some awesome content out for you guys to show my appreciation. So, again, backyard-pyro.com, uh, promo code 303pyro. And a quick shout-out to Great Lakes Mortar Racks. Uh, they provide these awesome blue tubes. I wouldn't buy my tubes for anywhere else. Great price, great product. They stand out. They're different. Just how I try to be. So, uh, appreciate you guys. Look out for that 500 subscriber video. Peace.